Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Aplastic Anemia Media, and today we're going to cover the important dates of my upcoming bone marrow transplant. Let's get to it. After waiting what felt like a thousand years, I finally got approved to get a bone marrow transplant at Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida on Monday, January 30th, and I am so excited. This video will cover the important dates leading up to the transplant, during transplant, and post-transplant. The important transplant dates are as follows. Central line placement on Monday, January 23rd. Admittance date, Tuesday, January 24th. Transplant date, Monday, January 30th. Discharge date, a mystery. All right then, keep your secrets. Good and 90 day mark, Sunday, April 30th. This video is gonna be split up into three parts. Part one is going to make up the first week, which is the central line placement, admittance date, and transplant date. Part two will cover the mysterious discharge date, and part three will cover the 90 day mark. My sister said I need to work on my transitions in my videos, so here's a transition into part one. Part one, central line placement, admission day, and transplant day. This is definitely going to be the meat of this video. Here you can see a visual I've created for the week leading up to my transplant day. First important date is Monday, January 23rd, which I highlighted in green, and you can see where I received the central line placement at 12 p.m. Probably asking yourself, what in the heck is a central line? Well, I'm here to explain that to you, my friend. According to the Moffitt Cancer Center Bone Marrow Transplant Guide, a central line is a thin, flexible plastic tube that is placed into a large vein in my chest. It provides easy access to a major vein so I can provide blood samples and receive fluids, nutrition, chemo, transfusions, and medications. It's very similar to a port or a pick line. I'm gonna love having this thing because it means they're not gonna poke my arms a thousand different times every single day. This procedure is surgical and it is done the day before I am admitted as an inpatient at Moffitt. The second important day is my admission day on Tuesday, January 24th, which is highlighted in purple here. Also happens to be the first day of chemotherapy. Eey. There are two types of chemotherapy that I will be receiving and that is Fludarabine and cyclophosphamide. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but hey, I'm doing my best. The purpose of the chemotherapy is to wipe out my remaining immune system. Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! So that way, whenever I do receive the transplant, I have the new immune system to go in and take its place. Along with those two chemos, I will also receive the ATG treatment again that I originally received a few years ago. However, that ATG treatment came from a horse and this one is coming from a rabbit. What? And yeah, I mean the animals. And the purpose of the ATG is so my body will have a higher likelihood of accepting the transplant. Now, as you can see here on the schedule, I'm only receiving chemotherapy for four days. And that's heavily in my favor because that means the match that I received is a very good one. Oftentimes, a lot of people will have to undergo six days of chemotherapy and potentially radiation as well, just to really make sure they clear out everything. So during this time, I am going to be extremely vulnerable to bacteria and viruses. So in the meantime, I'll take some antibacterial and antiviral medications along with some anti-nausea to help prevent the illness effects from chemotherapy. So after I receive those four days of chemotherapy, I will have two rest days on Saturday and Sunday, leading up to the third important date, and the most important one being the transplant day on Monday, January 30th. My transplant day will be referred to as day zero. The day after transplant is day plus one, following is day plus two, so on and so forth. My transplant day is also called my rebirth day. 
So I expect presents from each and every single one of you every single year on January 30th. And a very common misconception and a question that I get very often is, is this a surgical procedure? And the answer to that is no. So quit asking. It's very similar to a transfusion. Think of it like whenever you receive blood or platelets or whenever you donate blood or platelets, it's very similar. The transplant comes in a bag and they administer it into my central line. After they administer the transplant into my body, we wait for my body to engraft or accept the transplant. And this can take between 14 to 21 days. Sometimes it takes up to 30. While we wait for my body to engraft, I will remain an inpatient at Moffitt Cancer Center and I won't be able to leave my room except to walk the hallways. And I sure as heck won't be allowed outside because I still don't have an immune system. And whenever I do engraft, my counts will skyrocket. There have been people whose counts have doubled or tripled within the matter of days after their engraftment. And we're hoping the same happens with me, which then leads into the next transition. Part two, discharge day. Now we're hoping my body engrafts as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And once that happens, I will be discharged rather quickly from Moffitt. If all goes to plan, we are aiming for an early March discharge, although it could be even middle of February, but we're not going to count on that. In order to get discharged, doctors need to see these three specific counts go up. Those counts being the white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Once those counts do double or triple, it will be safe for me to go home and recover from there. And now we're going to transition into part three and the final important date, and that is Sunday, April 30th. So in between the time of discharge date and day 90, I will be recovering at home. I want to go home. I don't want to. I, I want to go home. My counts still won't be totally normal, but they will be safe enough to recover at home. And during this time, I will be an outpatient at Moffitt. You, you just couldn't let me go, could you? Where I will likely have appointments maybe daily, maybe every couple of days of the week. I'm not quite sure yet. And why is day 90 important? Well, once you get to day 90, there's a very high probability that your body has fully accepted the transplant and you won't have any complications going forward. There is a chance I will have to be readmitted into Moffitt before I reach day 90. It's a pretty common occurrence and most of the time you're just dealing with some kind of illness or virus and they're keeping you over for observation. And after day 90, I can go back to reliving most of my life. I'm sure I'm going to have some more restrictions. I don't know what those are right now. It depends person to person who gets these transplants. So hopefully I'll be able to go and hug and love all over you guys again. Conclusion transition. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my video. Please consider liking, subscribing, sharing this video. I'm hoping I'm able to educate the public about what it's like going through a bone marrow transplant and about aplastic anemia. And as always, please consider signing up for the bone marrow registry and or donating blood. There's a lot of people out there who need your help, folks. Thank you so much again and have a great day. Bye.